Hello YouTube, Ronan Kazi, Division 2, Legendary, Roosevelt Island. So, we've died several times. By several, I mean more than three, maybe four times. We're now in the last phase and we're having a problem. One of our players is glitched and other people are having problems. So I'm going to go back to the glitch guy and res him. This isn't working, this collar thing. I had it buttoned up. I don't know, sometimes I wear a shirt with everything buttoned up. Uh, but it just doesn't, it's not flying. So I res him, I start running back there and then he's gonna die. I don't know what's happening to him. Um, he eventually typed something in chat. And uh, so we're just trying to clear this last part. We barely got through it. Uh, when we started this, <clears throat> I was running my file jam. And you know when I'm in a group with uh, lower level people, that's not always great. I thought we had got through one and then I switched and we just didn't have enough horsepower. So I have pretty much run my high skill DPS build. I'm going to move this camera to YouTube. Normally when I'm going to uh, move the camera, I'm going to ask you to like, subscribe, share, comment when the comments work, hit notifications, trying to get to 500. So I've just stayed through with uh, my skill build, which has momentum and it has the, uh, whatever the exotic holster that oscillates back and forth. Uh, I know that's pretty controversial, but I, for whatever reason, it's my default thing. It gives me the maximum DPS I can get for a certain amount of time. It's my time to kill on this builds pretty small. So if, it happens to be up when there's a uh, chunger or something. I just mow through them. I still mow through them anyways. It's not even a thing. So at this point, I'm trying to type to the guy that's stuck. He says, when we go to the next level, it'll warp me in. So I give these guys a quick no warning chat thing, like we're going over the hill to warp this guy. And I say, run to the right immediately. One of the people tries to run to the boat. Um, and he did a good job. And that was my fault. That's sparse commands. We haven't talked the whole time. Uh, I'm probably fatigued at this point. And we had a person in the first groups, the first three or four times we went through. He charged forward. He charged forward. He died. We spent a lot of resources picking him up. And then he eventually quit. Like, that's how your life is, my friend. That's how your life is. Make mistakes, make mistakes, and then blame someone else when the mistakes are there. It's one of the things since I started this channel is I really look at everything I'm doing. It's really changed my behavior a lot, just in everything. Just everything I've told you, I do to myself. I look inward and I do that. So we're hopping the fence here. Um, and I'm surprisingly optimistic after crashing so many times. But now I've gone to Vile Jammer because I'm going to be throwing up that decoy up the wazoo. When you jump over, you really need to have at least one decoy. You should have two. But I'm going to have decoy and pulse. Pulse can reach everything. So that guy, you can see him up on the right. He's running up there, Joe Marine or whatever his name is. He's a great player. Lower watch level, but he plays great. And he's trying to carry out the mission. Sorry, sir, that was my fault. I'm the one that gave the stupid order, and I was recording it. So you don't have to record on your channel and say, what is it? Doofus, Rufus, Rufus Khan, Ronin Kazi. So we're going to mow through these copters really fast. So it's a great team. The guy comes in. But YouTube, we're a little bit underpowered. Just a little bit underpowered. And there he is. AKC, maybe that, yeah, that's AKC. That's not Joe Marines back here with me. Everyone was good at this point. Once we died the last time, we rolled through the content. It was almost embarrassing how much we rolled through the content. Great builds, people were putting on their best builds. Everything went good. So I know we visit this over and over and over again, and I have had um, a good challenging week. There's a lot of things. Uh, that I got to look inward. Uh, when someone presents you with facts or they think they're facts, let me roll all of this back. There's certain things in academia when you're 
thinking about research. You're going to look at for citations in the research. You're going to look who wrote it, what their credentials are. Um, is it peer reviewed? Have other people cited it? These are all things that kind of validate uh, research. What if, though, your premise is outside of that? So for perfect example is like Graham Hancock when he talks about that there's the Younger Dryas and there is a comet hit. And his stuff's pretty convincing. Now, he obviously, I don't know if he went to college or not. He's written other books. He does a lot of in-the-field studying. Um, at a certain point, right, here's a person that doesn't have a degree in that field, but he's challenging those people that have a degree. So how do you overcome that? And recently, I was presented with a case for things that I, I don't think they're true. But I, I guess some of the premises are true, but some of the facts that they claim in those premises aren't true. And it, and it, there's a saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So <clears throat> sometimes, YouTube, uh, when you have a baby, you might wash them in a little bowl. Back in the day, you know, they didn't have running water. So we're talking, like I so said, when they didn't have running water, so they have a bowl, they'd heat up the water, and they pour it in this bowl. When you're done with the water, you throw it out. And the saying is, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. That means the bath water is no good, but the baby's still good. This is normal when I ask you to like, subscribe, share, unsubscribe, resubscribe. Look at my mustache coming in. I told you about that one dude, Doc. You have to check some videos to see who Doc is. Um, comment when it works. Hit notifications. So when you're faced with these kind of challenges, um, and what's more important, the people making those statements are people you love and care about. And so uh, when I was younger and I raised my kids, uh, one time we were talking and we used to go to a pizza place every Saturday. I'd worked uh, uh, during the week. I was an on-the-road technician for, was in the Coast Guard, started a family near the end of my Coast Guard career when I was rising up. <clears throat> so we've gone through this part pretty fast. Now the helo's coming down. And everything's okay. And uh, when I got out of the Coast Guard, I became a technician for coordinate measuring machines and ended up being a technician for automation stuff at a company I worked for. And I was gone all the time during the week. When you're a technician, you basically work Monday through Friday on the road. It was okay. It, the pay was great. They compensated you well. Uh, but that's through my eyes. That's not through the eyes of my children, whom I love. And they might not have saw it that way. And that's okay. That's their reality. And that's all valid. So when I find these things out, I'm unprepared for them. And they cut unnecessarily deep. Uh, I'm not a super religious person, but I do believe in spirituality. And uh, my wife's pretty religious. And, uh, but she, w she had mentioned something like putting on your spiritual armor, Mrs. Ronan Kazi. So sometimes when I knew I was going to have a meeting, a business meeting or a tough conversation, I'd metaphorically put it on. I'd think about, you know, I'd visualize that. But I kind of, what I was doing was preparing myself for a tough discussion. I don't know what the discussion is going to be, but I'm preparing myself. So I've had some discussions this last week that I was unprepared for. Things went along and they just ended up in a place I didn't expect. And part of it is because I'm looking at the world through my own prism. Just like that person that was playing this game was looking at the world through their prism. They thought that's what we should do. And I'm not saying I have bona fides. I hated it when older folks would tell me their advice because I'm like, you're not me. Why are you limiting me to your dumb advice? So I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be an old codger. Here I am, YouTube, you should do this. So I really, in my heart of hearts, that's not what I'm telling you. I'm trying to share and I try to be self-effacing, not because I'm doing it for anything, because what I'm trying to do is I think some of these messages are pretty good and they're poignant and they can help you. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about today. Uh, everything's cruising along. I have these conversations and some of the conversations just aren't. Well, how do you know anything's true, YouTube? Okay, so what has happened 
You see, everyone died. The Chunga came. I threw out my decoy, lured him over to the right, and ran around. And now I'm picking up this guy who went down in the beginning. This is the best spot now to fight from with the Chunga. And again, when I have the Vile Jammer, I'm constantly putting damage out. And with the, I got to keep the Chunga out of here. So he's coming back around. We're not in the best part to get the Chunga. So I'm thinking about a lot of different options. I'm also having these conversations with people I really care about. Some of them are new conversations or people I've cared about for a while, but now we're having a conversation uh, that's new for us. Mrs. Ronan Kazi and I have had a lot of these. So these aren't like Mrs. Ronan Kazi and I. She has to put up with me, YouTube. So she's a saint. And the other conversation caught me out of the blue. One of my my kids. And as a parent, and, and I'm going to say something, if you don't have kids, you're going to, it's, when you have kids, uh, I was reading a Carlos Castaneda book. He's the guy that wrote about the teaching of Don Juan. He was an anthropologist in UCLA in the late 60s who went to find out what the uh, effects of peyote were. And he ended up becoming, you know, there's a whole thing. I, I wouldn't do the, that series of book justice. It's a profound book. But there is this idea that everyone has this luminous egg. And because he cared about his children, his luminous egg wasn't whole. He had a hole in it. And it, so time out, YouTube. Uh, let me see. We got a lot of time left. Uh, dude just died again. And so now I'm going to one one So this is normally because I'm about to die here, YouTube. I've escaped death several times. I'm not that kind of player. I can't do this. I'm not going to be able to do it, especially with the week I had YouTube. I'd like to call it in. What I've noticed about the Scorpio and the test subject, the Scorpio doesn't isn't great for damage, but the test subject is after you put the debuff with the Scorpio on. Uh, for a long time, I just wouldn't change up the weapons and it would take a long time. This is a little subplot in here. This is why you're always analyzing or taking stock of what's going on. Sometimes you might not do it with your family because it's a little rough for them. But in your gameplay, this is something you should be doing or you're driving to work or whatever. So I finally repel him out of there and I'm going to vile jam room. So one of the things I have in this build, I have, I don't have the Hive Reviver because it's a skill slot that I need. But I have Unbreakable on my chest piece, on all my chest pieces, and that allows me to basically have one every 60 seconds, one like that. <laughs> one thing where I'm going to make it. So I revive him, and basically at this point it's over YouTube, like game one. But I still have this conundrum, how do I have these conversations? Well, on one of the people, on my son, we spent so many years talking that we kind of, um, he's good at arguing. Arguing isn't heated and doesn't have to be where you're at each other's throat. It's just what the word means. You're trying to convince each other of your point, your point of view. Maybe at this point in my life, I don't really care. I think I've said this before. Uh, on things that I know, I just know them. And on things that I'm not sure about, I usually don't say anything about. I don't know how that build with the shield is. I don't use it, but I know how vile jammer is. And I know that uh, more than once, the build I have, YouTube, my light went out. <laughs> the build I have is pretty good for this kind of stuff. So my son, I can understand, but those are feelings. He has feelings of how life was. And so I'm not going to gaslight him or go near anything. That is Macy that you're now and Roxy is higher. That's Roxy and Macy's the deep one. Macy's kind of like the head of the dogs. She's the oldest dog. She's physically the biggest. Caesar's the youngest dog, but he's second biggest. And Roxy's a little dog about this big. I don't, I don't know how old she is, but she's a mouthy. So with my son, it's a tough because what he says cuts through me. I'm not prepared to listen or hear what he's saying to me because it, what he's telling me is uh, it's hurtful to me. It's not that I did anything. He's not doing anything on purpose. He's just telling me how he felt. And I was unaware of that. And this other person uh, just doesn't know how to argue. So they just, they wouldn't even bring up the subject if they said, 
you know, this, that, and this. I will acknowledge his main point, but the facts that he's trying to use are just complete silly. But I don't want to break him down step by step because that's tough. He doesn't, that's not his forte. So that's tough, YouTube. So maybe in the next video, I'll tell you how it goes or I'll let you know. But this is Ronan Kazi with a conundrum. Have a great one, YouTube.